Hey everybody, this is Sam from Wrestling Overtime, and I wanted to bring you guys the news and updates for May 15th, 2020. I uh, wanted to let you guys know that Rachel Ellering was released from WWNXT's contract on Black Wednesday. However, her name just got put out here recently. She's the daughter of Paul Ellering, who is the manager or was the manager of the Road Warriors. And he also uh, managed a OP in NXT for a while. She wrestled under the name Rachel Evers in NXT, and she hadn't been on NXT TV in a while because she suffered a torn ACL injury in July and has been on the shelf since. It is my understanding, however, that WWE is going to continue to take care of her medical billing while she is recovering, she's just not going to um, be under contract with them. On Tuesday, May 26th, FS1 is going to air a documentary on WWE's Florida Championship Wrestling. It was a developmental territory. The documentary is going to be called A Future WWE, and it's the secondary title is the FCW Story, and this is according to the, the PW Insider. I wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that so you could set your DVRs and make sure that you actually uh, pay attention and Record that if you're busy, because FCW is where a lot of developmental talent were sent. Now, I know that all of us know in the Ruthless Aggression area, Air, John Cena, Dave Batista, Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton, all of those were sent up to the Ohio Valley. But after that, they started using Florida Championship. So um, the Bellas went down there. Uh, I believe the Miz. Seth Rollins, I think, was down there. I think he was one of the last ones that was in the warehouse and trained there and was in FCW. Then, of course, they built the Performance Center and started NXT. So this actually should be a really good documentary if any of you guys haven't seen it. On the WWE's bump, Otis said him and Tucker are going to continue to be a tag team and that they will be a tag team for four years on July 22nd. So over a little over three and a half years they've been together. And Otis mentioned that him and Chad Gable are also good friends. He believes that Chad Gable is the most elite wrestler in the WWE right now. So that was a little bit of a shock because there have been some rumors stating that if Otis and Mandy continue to get as much interaction and fan tweeting and social media interest and people talking about them, that they may be looking at sending Tucker back down to NXT or releasing him uh, breaking up that tag team. Otis, however, on the bump, says he doesn't think so. It was announced on AEW Dynamite on TNT that Mike Tyson 
will present the new AEW TNT Championship title at Double or Nothing on May 23rd. Now, the last Double or Nothing that was held in 2019, Mike Tyson actually attended. He was ringside and he was backstage. And so that's where he got to know a lot of the different players of AEW and he got it, he got to meet Tony Khan. Rick Flair was on Instagram on May 14th, which was Thursday. He took a few different questions on Instagram Live. People were, um, seemed like they were throwing questions at him really quick, and he was trying his best to keep up. Some of the questions that he answered were, WrestleMania 24 was his greatest match, and it was the one against Shawn Michaels. He said if he was a fan, that Michaels versus Undertaker at WrestleMania was the greatest match he's ever seen. If he could have one more match, he would want it to be against Roman Reigns. He said that his greatest title victory was when he defeated Harley Race for the NWA World Heavyweight title in a steel cage at Starcade 1983. Now, I have made a note of that because I want to go back and see that. I vaguely remember Harley Race. I think I remember him more because of my grandmother talking about him. But I I don't have anything in my memory bank of him actually wrestling. Um seems to me that I have pictures in my head of him possibly being king of the ring or something like that or wearing a king outfit. But if Rick Flair is saying this is his greatest title win, was in Starcade of 1983, then I definitely want to go back and, and, and watch that. Rick Flair also said that Bobby Heenan, Bobby the Brain, and Jim Cornette are the greatest managers of all time. And I don't know that anybody will disagree with that. I really don't. I, I, I agree with that. I think Bobby Heenan and, and Jim Cornette were just unbelievable. I know that some of you will say Jimmy Hart, the mouth of the South, um, would be up there. And, and he probably is. He's probably in the top five, top ten. But I don't know that anybody can beat out Bobby the Brain Heenan or Jim Cornette. Steve Stone Cold Austin was in L.A. running errands, and he shared a photo of his Alabama football mask on Instagram. He was wearing um, a protective mask because he was going out, and a fan commented that The mask goes against your reputation. Stay strong, be a rebel, and do not conform. Cool mask, but strip off the communism. Well, Steve Austin saw this comment and responded with, Shut up, dude. Now, What this guy may not have realized is L.A. residents are required to wear a face mask when going outside, and they can be arrested or detained if they're not. So not only was Stone Cold following the law, he also was protecting himself and the others that he was planning on being around. So I think Stone Cold was actually 
looking out for others like I think he always does. And for a fan to stoop that low and, you know, tell him that it went across or, or went against his reputation and for him not to conform, I think was a little ridiculous, especially in this day and age where people are dying from this. And I'm sure that Stone Cold does not want to be a reason that a family member or a friend of his gets COVID-19 and would be put in the hospital or even die from this. Um, WWE announced this week that Sami Zayn has been stripped of the WWE Intercontinental Championship. A tournament is going to begin on SmackDown on this Friday to crown a new champion. Sami Zayn has health concerns regarding working due to COVID-19. Sami tweeted out after this was announced, I disagree with this decision, and no matter what anyone says, I am still undefeated, and therefore still am the Intercontinental Champion. Now, there are a lot of rumors concerning this story. I'm sure here in about 10 years we'll hear the real story, because Sami Zayn was around he obviously won the intercontinental championship he has not defended it since he won it he went um back home in order to get his wisdom teeth cut out and he was planning on traveling to be on SmackDown that night. However, WWE said that they didn't need him for him to stay home and rest, but they would see him next week. Well, when Sami Zayn decided not to show up that week, he called and that's when he told him he was worried about COVID-19 and bringing it back to his family or him possibly getting it. And that is when WWE decided to strip his belt away from him. Now, WWE's Christian retired in March 2014. He's been getting a lot of questions on Twitter and it being tweeted into WWE backstage about him coming back because Edge came back. So he had an interview with Wrestling Inc. and he was asked about coming back. Christian said, no, I have a different injury than what a lot of people have that are coming back, like Daniel Bryan, like Edge. I'm pretty much content with where I'm at and the things I'm doing right now. There is zero chance I will be back in the ring wrestling. So there you have it, and you can quit bothering Christian. He has no desire to come back and wrestle. Um, I think he understands how serious his concussions were and how they can only get worse if he would take certain shots or accidentally take a shot. And he doesn't want to go through that. And since he he retired in 2014. He's had six years to really understand that, to get tests, and to deal with it. He's enjoying being on TV. He enjoyed the podcast and the TV show that he had with Edge. He he's he did a um, I forget the name of it, but he did a show on the History Network um, about knives. And different blades. So I think Christian is very happy with what he's doing. 
And for those of you who don't know, this coming weekend, his new movie is coming out that is also starring John Moxley called The Cage Fighter. And it's being offered on Fight TV. So you guys need to catch that because from what I understand, it's supposed to be a very good movie. But that's all the news and updates that I have for you right now. Uh, I'm sure I will have some this weekend after the SmackDown raves and reviews um, episode that we'll be doing. So hopefully you're caught up and raring to go. Um, if, as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, problems, or protests, write me at wrestleovertime at gmail.com or hit me up at wrestling overtime, um, on Twitter or on Facebook so that I can talk to you guys. I, I want to hear what you're thinking about the different news and updates that are going on, but I look forward to talking to you guys soon.